Well, first thing you need to do is you need to start lifting some weights. And that first set of Christmas weights paid off. By 18, Chris Benoit was bench pressing 400 pounds. Never missed, never a day. Always in the gym, always working out. At the time, all the guys were out hanging around uh, street corners and malls and that. They'd come to the door and ask him to come out and he'd say, gotta lift my weights. And when he wasn't training, Chris Benoit was waiting for Stampede Wrestling's next visit to Edmonton, working up the courage to approach his idol. Dynamite, big slam, he's going to go high. Gamma spots him. I was sitting in the stands and Chris walked over and knocked on the dressing room door and uh, asked to, to see Dynamite and Dynamite came out and talked to him. Though Benoit on the left was several years younger, it was already becoming hard to tell the two apart. He was just enthralled with him totally. Uh, this is exactly what he wanted to do. By 1984, Chris Benoit's determination had paid off. Now 215 pounds, he became part of Stampede Wrestling himself, a good guy in the ring and out of it. Chris Benoit was a class guy, just the nicest guy in the world. He's the kind of guy that would get a door for a little old lady and just a gentleman, total gentleman, soft-spoken, easygoing, good sense of humor. Benoit also was welcomed into the extended Hart clan. By this time, the brood in Calgary included eight sons who became wrestlers, most famously Brett and Owen and four daughters married wrestlers. They were one big family. The Dynamite Kid married Michelle Smadu. Bret Hart married Michelle's sister, Julie. Bret's sister, Diana, married the Dynamite Kid's tag team partner, Davey Boy Smith, despite the objections of her mother. She said, but I just don't want any of my girls to marry wrestlers. And then they all marry wrestlers. Yeah, well, just goes to show you, I don't know, it was, maybe it was the water. I think it all goes back to my father. I think my sisters all married men that they thought were like my father. Back on the road in the Stampede van, Chris Benoit learned the ropes from the Dynamite Kid, literally. Perfecting the neck-snapping, head-jarring high-wire act that the kid brought from England. It was a hard life for hard men, and the Dynamite Kid was certainly that, though he seemed to have a soft spot for young Chris Benoit. Tom always had an affection for him, and I always wondered if it was because they looked so similar and Chris could uh, imitate Tom's style perfectly. Stu Hart has predicted big things for this young Chris Benoit, and we're getting them already. Basically, he followed in Dynamite's footsteps, the way he wrestled, with the flying headbutts off the top of the rope. Even the way he walked, I mean, this, he emulated Dynamite Kid. As you will see, there would be even more dangerous ways in which Chris Benoit imitated his idol. By now, the Dynamite Kid had wrestled in Canada for seven years with the scars to show for it. Tom had many injuries. He was taking Percocex, Percodan, Quaaludes, you know, all kinds of uh, drugs, self-medicating himself to live with the pain. A lot of these guys that got taking pain pills from even Dynamite Kid and so many of these guys, I don't think they ever realized, um, I don't think they ever saw them as a bad thing. I think they always saw them, they're harm, it was almost like harmless, it's not gonna hurt anything. As Stu Hart taught them, pain went with the territory. Constantly on the road, so did alcohol and a wide range of pharmaceuticals according to Jake the Snake Roberts. I couldn't go to sleep at night because I, I just want to keep thinking how much better can I be? What can I do? What can I invent? What would be a better way to do this? Just that craving to do the perfect damn thing. You can't even go to sleep, man. And uh, so you self-medicate. In a line of work where one not only needed to be strong, but to look at, there were, of course, steroids. They, too, were seen as harmless at first. Then came the outbursts known as roid rage. The Dynamite Kid's wife, Michelle. Well, the first sign I saw was when he hit me because I had accidentally spilt an ashtray. 
the moment the ashtray spilt and I bent over to pick it up, he hit me in the middle of the back. I was just shocked. I didn't, you know, I had never seen that side of him. That's when he told me he was taking steroids and they tended to make him angry. But the steroids continued and the Dynamite Kid's rages kept getting worse. He uh, put me in some holds. He popped my jaw, dragging me around the kitchen by the hair. This is all the while my daughter Bronwyn and Merrick are watching. According to other Stampede wrestlers, steroids were part of the job for everyone, including Chris Benoit. He'd probably look at himself in the mirror and say, boy, I'm starting to look small. I better juice up some more. And I'm, I'm you know, it's my own personal belief that that was leading to maybe his excessive use of steroids. When we come back, the fairy tale career of Edmonton's Chris Benoit becomes a nightmare. Police say Benoit murdered his wife and son on the weekend, then killed himself. 